Here we are folks in game one. We have already loaded onto the rift. Uh, both teams are finally, all their character models are finally there as the gates do open. Now, uh, not too, we have some time in this game uh, before things heat up, hopefully. Though we could see some invades coming out from both teams. It looks like Hyper Ninja Beam are pinging that bottom river. Now, dual flash start for the each top laner, or each of the top laners, uh, as our resident top laner, Tay, talk us through that pick. I honestly would rather go Doran's Reign on the Lulu. Uh, just, I find it gives you a bit more pressure in the lane. Uh, you can start throwing, throwing out those glare lances to clear waves a bit quicker. Uh, Fast though, safer start. You get the healing, you get the mana regen. Might be looking to stay in lane a bit longer. I like going back earlier with a Doran's Ring start. So she might be looking to wait it out. Uh, but Hecarim, Flask is exactly what you need. Uh, you're kind of weak in that early game, so you want to have that sustain going for you. So, as I said, just, it's a common start flask but i would have liked the doran's ring a bit more yeah well we all well not all know but i personally know you love that machine gun lulu build uh going that ad uh but it looks like a phoenix is just gonna opt out for that uh, ap lulu so we'll see how that works out now interesting start from panpu though does not go machete Instead, going cloth armor and a uh, five pots. Do you think he might go for a dragon? I'm almost. It depends on if he takes two points and consume. If he takes two points and consume, he is definitely going for a dragon. So we have to make sure uh, to keep out an eye for that. Now, meanwhile, in the mid lane, Katarina does start a boots. They're just going to try to dodge the Ari poke as much as possible. I can't fault her for that start at all. Um, and uh, down in the mid lane, I have no complaints here, Rambo. You see me. I have no complaints. Both supports. It's, I'm happy. That's it. You, you know, <laughs> for for once, both supports doing doing what is standard, and uh, I am I'm good. But Pepper Moose actually starting with that early ward. Uh, they are actually uh, nice straight onto Chewy. He drops really low. Exhaust is dropped. They want this, and it's just first blood for Spartan right now, making it look easy. Big blast, Brendan. Unfortunately, not level two. Did not have heal available as he did start bubble. Oh no, he started Tide Blessers calling. Mind you. Quite a mistake there from Big Blast Brendan. As, a, as an ADK player there, Rambo, how important is that level two in the bot lane? It it is everything. If you are far away from level two, the lane can honestly be over early. Uh, but it looks like Lucian just pushed and got the level two before Sivir, and we saw the result. It ended in first blood. Yeah, it's, it's something we might not have seen for a while, but the Lucian Braum lane has such good synergy together with the passive from Braum and the double shot from Lucian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely get those Braum passive stacks up very quickly. Yeah, Lucian falling quite out of favor uh, after the rise of uh, maybe that uh, Juggerma or the Severe, but here comes a gank from Panpu. Alex dropping quite low. Uh, the uh, Ice Blast uh, from Panpu definitely uh, trading. Meanwhile, trading all around. They actually go in. Nice two-man bubble coming out from Big Boss Brendan. Uh, but Exhaust being dropped on a Raffle Spartan. Pepper uh, does need to get uh, healed uh, by a Spartan as he was blinking red. But uh, so far, quite even in that mid lane. Flash! Uh, charm from Sloppy right now as XC drops really low. He is ignited. And Sloppy will pick up that solo kill in the mid lane for himself. 
That was well played uh, by Sloppy. She uh, waited right before, right as uh, Katamina went up to get the last hit, flashed in front, and landed the charm. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Nesting is up there on Phoenix Genesis. Panpu is here trying to help his top laner, but Ignite is taking on to Phoenix, and he is just going to go down to Alex. Meanwhile, they now turn on to Panpu as he drops really low. The slow from uh, Sejuani is going to force out the flash from Panpu, but he will get away with his life. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, the trading continues. Both of them very low. Uh, Rawful Spartan actually having to back now as he is blinking red. Does still have flash available, but not wanting to push it. Panpu now finally recalling. He was. <laughs> this quite is something low. interesting. As Rawful Spartan got that first blood, killed out the Saber, but is actually losing in CS. Um, that could cost him. That could uh, that could have meant uh, a big sword coming back to lane, and instead he just has that pickaxe. Yeah, uh, Alex actually going out to Phoenix Gen uh, right now, nesting, seeing what they could do, but unfortunately not having that ultimate yet, as uh, Sejuani is only level four right now, but still keeping pressure up onto Phoenix in that top lane. Uh, is sitting on that Codex as he has gone back. Meanwhile. Uh, Alex did take that opportunity, comes back to lane with a Sheen. Tay, what are your thoughts on that versus that Lulu matchup? Uh, Sheen is the is a big item for Hecarim. That charge can start doing tons of damage. And I would have personally gone Chalice on Lulu. Uh, you go through your mana pretty quick up there, spamming out spells. And though she has a mana pot, it doesn't quite make up for what a Chalice would give you. Oh, fair enough. Now Sloppy with that solo kill is a, a level ahead. And now Exceed finally hitting 6, but he is getting so chunked in lane. Um, actually only has an Amplifying Tome and uh, still a couple of pots left. And there it is, a pause. As soon as Sloppy engages onto Exceed, oh no! Now seeing as I do have my chat... Uh, not shown. I hope it's not anything serious right now. Uh, internet issues is what they say. Okay, well, hopefully it gets sorted and we don't have too long of a pause. But uh, now taking a closer look on this, both junglers have actually opted out for that Trailblazers. Um, now it's going to be interesting on what enchant they're going to get. I probably can assume that it's going to be that Cinder Hulk. It is just very strong on tank jugglers right now, getting that 25% uh, of health. But there it is, they are actually going to resume right now. Sloppy going to Exceed does miss at, at Orb, but Charm is going to pick up the kill. And Exceed... Losing lane. Kinda confused why she shunpoted back to lane to flash back to tower. Uh, could have just ward hopped to your tower, then flashed away for the big uh, disengage. Yeah, nesting will poke in his head though. Uh, unfortunately, sloppy will just be safe. Uh, and that mid lane already snowballing of sloppy right now. I don't know if Katarina can get that answer. Is going to go opt for that haunting guys, uh, that penetration. But um, with that kill, I almost feel that that uh, Sloppy is going to come back with an Athenes, going to have that MR as well. But meanwhile, Chewie gets chunked out quite a bit. Peppermoose going on to him, applying that uh, passive buff bubble, missing for Big Vest Brendan as the Chewie gets a Q to the face. That piercing light from Lucian can't be underestimated. Now, actually, it's going to be that Morale Nomicon for Sloppy with the buff to Athens. I almost feel like that's a mistake, considering the fact that he is versus an AP mid laner. She wants the extra 20 AP Morello gives. That's uh, basically all the difference she's looking at right now is just the bonus damage. Oh, Charm missing for Sloppy, and that's going to be the green light for Exceed to go as he pops the ulti, chunking Sloppy down, but uh, he will uh, chug a pot, uh, keeping uh, quite uh, going to be quite healthy in lane. 
Um, and that is the window that Exceed is looking for. Uh, if Sloppy misses a charm, knows that there is no CC available after that, can uh, potentially win out on that trade. Uh, thankfully, the Katarina Harass on Q is free. They go on to here, but there's going to be a TP from Alex as he go all ulties into Professor Chewy, and that's going to be one dead severe. They will go after a big blast. Brendan, uh, Glacial Fissure not going to hit as Culling chunks it away. Alex is just going to tank the turret as he gets healed up by Raffle Spartan. I believe, oh, the uh, stand behind me is going to be enough of a resist to help Alex live. Now Pepper uh, is going to try to help his team disengage. Sloppy is down here right now. Uh, Hecarim will go on to this, but Alex will pay for it with his life with an Ice Blast to the face. But Raffle Spartan will pick up Sloppy in exchange. Panpu needs to get out of there wanting to duel against it, and it's going to be a double kill for Raffle Spartan. For both. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he did get Pepper Moose. I thought Pepper Moose got away. But it is going to be, I guess, that red buff tick onto Pepper Moose will pick that up as uh, Raffle Spartan is sitting on that red buff uh, with a happy donation from Pan Poo. So all in all, quite an even trade down there in the bot lane. But explosive uh, it was actually already. A four for two, if you include the two kills they had right before. Oh, uh, fair enough. Uh, but with that said, uh, that Lucian now 4-0-1 comes back to lane with almost an Infinity Edge. So Rambo, as, when you're at any carry, you're sitting on 4-0-1, what's your goals for the rest of the game? Do you want to take that tower or are you going to try to or you take that tower in Rome or do you want the laning phase to continue on for you? Uh, it honestly depends on how your team is doing. Uh, your team is in a pretty good position if you're 4 0 and 1. But uh, you kind of want to farm up, push the tower slowly, take advantage, maybe zone the other AD carry. Uh, now, with Lucian being uh, that strong. Oh, well, Alex actually stops, gets charmed to the face, and Sloppy will pick up that kill. I don't know why he stopped just under tower a little bit of a spake. Well, uh, Sejuani ulti missing. Uh, does get the slow on Big Bad Central, but. Uh, Tidal Wave is going to uh, be enough to disengage. Culling coming out from Raffle Spartan will not find anything, but it looks like they are just going to rotate for that dragon. Uh, first dragon looking like it's going to be in favor of uh, a PC, though, considering the fact that Pampu is nowhere near that. Big Blast Brandon is hovering around, does have vision onto the dragon, wants for the bubble steal. It gets two players, but not the dragon, as it is uh, easily smited by nesting. So first, so that Sejuani ult does show us uh, that la that one definitely shows us that the nerf from ninety percent slow to the thirty percent slow, how big that actually is. If that was the old Sej ult, that would have still been a kill on a uh, big blast, Brendan. Yeah, well, with all of this said, they might have gotten the dragon, but three members of Hyper Ninja Beam are just going to take that T two top lane. So, two so a dragon for two towers. Uh, it, oh, I, I feel like Hyper Ninja Beam is not too worried about that, but they will lose that middle tower though. Uh, nice reaction coming out from Nesty and Exceed, uh, knowing that uh, Sloppy was up there, helping push. Now Exceed is going to rate down bot lane. Chewy uh, getting dropped really low. TP coming in from Phoenix Genesis is going to enough to dissuade Raffle Spartan and uh, Pepper. To back off right there, but Chewie getting really low. Exceed and nesting around. Nice flash ulti, but a wild growth will stop that Katarina ulti, and that's what he needed to go wait for. Phoenix, though, getting chunked out. Uh, Q's hitting, and Exceed will pick that up with a Q of his own. And even with a botched attempt, they do end up still picking up that top laner. And the tower as well. So a kill on a tower going over uh, for a PC right now. Need to be careful about that top wave though. Uh, so let's talk items, guys. Let's talk items. Walk us through this. Well... In the top lane, you see Lulu's now finished that Morello's, uh, which is actually a great buy versus Hecarim. 
Hecarim heals an insane amount with his, uh, get quite what it's called, but his W. That's all I know it is. It's his W. And it's unlimited healing versus champions uh, for the damage it deals. So Morelos is a big pickup, and we can see Hecarim is halfway done his Triforce. Once he hits that is when he hits his big power spike. Yeah, well, he is still quite a ways from that. Well, actually, no, he could uh, pick that up with a back right now. He is t sitting on about 1,300 gold, uh, so really needs to pick that up as soon as possible. Now, nesting, um, with the amount of AP coming out from Hyper Ninja, does go for that Negatron Cloak right now, but five members of Hyper Ninja trying to push, uh, well, trying to muscle their way down for this T2, but it's going to be an ulti coming out. Uh, TP from Alex gets Polymorph there, though, and bubbled, not able able to onslaught of shadows the wombo from hyper ninja beam is coming to fruition uh Sichuani tries to ulti to dis help disengage from their seam and but there is no follow-up and hyper ninja beam is going to chase it down a uh, kill for professor chubi xe trying to go off but gets polymorph uh, uh holds onto the ulti but it's not going to be enough double kill coming out for uh, chewy right now as he is going off in the back line nice answer from spartan though picking up the kill on pampu uh as he tries to defend this turret now with hyper ninja beam uh, blinking red uh, with low health bars, they will back off from that. Uh, but, uh, two for one trade in favor of them. And as you see, gr their Wombo really helping them out in that team fight right there. And that just shows you, Hecarim, uh, Lulu is a great counter to Hecarim. He can whimsy him on any attempt to home guard in. And that shuts down about 800 damage from his uh, Triforce Home Guard proc with the uh, with his E. Yeah, heck, Alex not even able to pop his onslaught of shadows for that, uh, getting polymorphed right into a Aqua Prism from Big Blast Brendam. Great reaction time from him, actually landing that bubble uh, for that chain CC. Now, unfortunately, Pampu did get charmed out of his ulti um, and then falls to uh, Raffle Spartan uh, in that team fight but it just shows how dangerous Hyper Ninja Beam is PC really need to watch out for their engages now Exceed held on to his ulti ultimate uh, after that but really it wasn't enough uh, he was already dropped quite low, and uh, Chewy will pick up the double kill uh, in that team fight. So a nice bounce back coming up from Severe. She was 0-2, uh, but now 2-2-1, two, two, finally going even. But comparatively to Raffle Spartan, 5-0-1 oh, on that Lucian. I almost feel... Yeah, he is. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, so, so he is doing quite well for himself at 501, but in the last fight, he almost did no damage. He got zoned out right off the start, and that's something that he needs to make sure he gets his damage out. He is right now almost 100% of the damage coming out. Well, uh, just like that, Hyper Ninja Beam will finally take the last T1 uh, for. Uh, of, sorry, PC. And it looks like um, not something that you see a built, but poachers as the jungle choice item for Nunu. Now Nunu is known to do a lot of counter jungling, but I almost feel that he hasn't been able to make use of it too much, despite their aggressive tower pushing strat now pc are going to go for this dragon uh so far no contention from hyper ninja beam and they are just going to push down the t2 turret and it's a smart choice considering that the fact that they have the minion wave there and they are just going to try to disengage off that alex trying to see if they can make something happen but hyper ninja beam just need to get out of dodge doing actually a lot of poke um as they make their exit onto alex seeing as he is only sitting on that Trinity Force, and not really that tanky Hecarim just yet. But Hyper Ninja trade a dragon for a T2 tower. 
I'm actually really impressed, but Alt uh, Sloppy gets caught out right there. Wild Growth on him as he tries to dash away the flank of Onslaught on Shadows from Alex, but will not get the kill as they disengage from that. Now Hyper Ninja Beam actually quite low, but the chase is on for PC as they come. Nice. Uh, Idle wave coming out. Pampu gets a full channel ulti, but he has no AP right now. Phoenix Genesis will fall to an ignite. Kill going over to Exceed and a two for nothing trade. Unfortunately, they did not have Severe in that fight. Professor Chewie actually backing to buy could have easily finished off uh, three members of PC with those bouncing blades. Sloppy has finally come back though. Healed up quite a bit thanks to that uh, passive. And it looks like PC are uh, thinking about uh, the re-engage here. But Professor Chu is finally here. Going to help uh, clear out that uh, middle wave. And it, it really looks like Hyper Ninja Beam not knowing that they had no vision of Dragon couldn't really contest it and a very smart choice just going for that um, T2 tower I uh, I can't say enough about that I that's really really smart play coming out from them uh, this game so we're looking at it. it's 20 minutes in now Baron spawn it's kind of like in, uh, in a lot of ways this is kind of like the sign, all right, we're, we're almost nearing late game in a sense because the Baron is late game as in objective control at this point. With the towers going down as quickly as uh, Hyper Ninja has taken them down, but with the team fight still kind of going in the in favor of the uh, President's Choice, I'm trying to still figure out who's going to be scaling a bit better in this game. What are you guys' thoughts? Well, with so much focus on the ADCs kind of carrying this game. Rambo, with that matchup, what are your thoughts about that? Give us a little bit of insight. Uh, on the AD carry matchup? Oh, pause. Oh, well, <laughs> um. perfect. Perfect time so that we can talk about this. Uh, yeah, Sivir, Sivir brings a lot of utility to team fights and a lot of damage as well. Uh, Lucian, he's he's more of a duelist. He likes to, you know, take those one-on-one -on -one fights, maybe in one of the side lanes. But I doubt that's going to happen in this game. Uh, Hyper Ninja Beam have two sight stones, so I expect a lot of deep wards for them, and hoping they can get some really good objective control with the utility from Sivir. Yeah, and I like how you brought up the side stones. Yeah, I, I was actually just about to say that. Now, coming out from the the White Camp game versus... Oh my goodness, my mind is going blank. Uh, Bellinus Pro League. Right, BPL. Orca. Uh, Orca, Team Orca. Um, <laughs> not going hungry with that last game. Not able to get that dolphin. But I digress. With that double sight stone, now that I see... The vision for Hyper Ninja Beam actually isn't that great. I'm it's it's very underwhelming. Uh with the amount of pink wards that they have in their inventory, the double side stone, maybe I you know, I'm not giving them credit, maybe they just haven't had a chance to put it down, but the warding is very lackluster. It's I dare say almost in favor. Like, it's not even the quantity of wards, it's where they're placed. And I would honestly have to give it, looking at the map right now, to PC. It, it looks like Hyper Ninja Beam wants to make a play for the Baron. That's where most of their wards are right now. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. Uh, thoughts on that? They do um. have the Wombo. Right, but they have mm -hmm. given up two dragons where we have said they would have a better engagement with these open fields uh, or open kind of uh, lanes, but they've d instead decided to go for the tower objectives instead. And I can't fault them for that. Speaking of the ADCs, Sivir is able to 
push lanes like a monster with those uh, bouncing blades, right? So they're actually yeah. using it quite well. The blood boil from Nunu 2 can't be underestimated. Uh, and they have just trade been trading towers. Now, that does, in essence, grant them free vision um, if their minions are there. But they just need to get those deep wards in the jungle of PC. And that has yet to happen. Sorry, I cut you off, Tay. Oh, I was just like... I hope, I hope, I'm hoping that we just caught the pause at the wrong time, and they haven't got around to place in those wards. There we are. We're seeing all that instantly. Two pink wards go down, so they are setting up that Baron, and they don't have the greatest Baron team. They do have the Nunu though, with the big consume smite. But other than him, they don't have a lot of consistent damage if Sivir is pushing lanes. So they need to make sure that they get a pick uh, before trying anything around the Baron. Yeah, um, and I feel like the answer to this is putting Alex in the split pushing role. He is the TP ignite Hecarim, and he just needs to he just needs to put pressure on Hyper Ninja Beam with towers as well to make them pay for it. But he, here's going to be a fight in the Dragon Pit. A uh, nice ulti from Nesting uh, with that Sejuani, but it's going to be ultimate zero from Panpu. He doesn't get out of it. Professor Chewie does pick up a kill, but the answer of Raffle Spartan is one for one right now. Exceed cleans up uh, Panpu though, and it's a double kill for Raffle Spartan and double kill for Exceed. A fail flash on Bren Big Blast Brendan is going to result in an ace for that was, PC. That was the perfect fight. As I was saying, they want those corridor fights, and they ended up fighting between that wall and the Wraith camp, or the Raptor camp uh, wall and the river wall. So Sejuani got the perfect ult. She hit three members all stunned up, followed up with the Hecarim ult, and then at the end you could see the Katarina. Katarina was behind in lane, but all she needed was that one fight, and that just got her four kill, or got her a couple kills, couple assists. Now she has that Zhonya's with the Haunting guys and can just be cleaning up these fights uh, as long as Sedge keeps landing beautiful alts like that. Yeah, and that's not to mention the fact that Raffle Spartan was untouched besides that ultimate Seer from Nunu. And unfortunately, Panpu does not have a lot of AP. So despite getting the full channel of his ultimate Zero, not doing a lot of damage. And unfortunately, Professor Chewy could not clean up the low health bars because he fell so early in that fight but it looks like from losing from getting aced uh hyper ninja beam is going for this risky baron they do get spotted out by pc though alex is coming in for the flank ultimates down for both of them but they just need to buy time for it and it looks like a uh, hyper ninja beam is going to smartly disengage from that not a fight that they want to be really taking and all of a sudden, you see all those pink wards that they invested into are being taken out. Well, uh, well, that they uh, since they could not get that Baron, the vision control they tried to get is completely wasted now. And hopefully, I'm still not seeing it, but hopefully, uh, play, uh, President's Choice will pick up some wards. Well, Alex does get caught out by Sloopy. He is trying to fight for his life, but that is the danger of uh, teleport ignite. If you do get caught out in lane. You will die not having that flash or ghost available, but despite his sacrifice, it is going to be the third dragon for PC. Meanwhile, Hyper Ninja Beam is trying to respond with a Baron. It will be quite an even trade, actually, in favor of Hyper Ninja Beam if they do. But as you said, they don't have the best Baron team as it is going down incredibly slowly. But the Sedge ulti is huge. The Tidal Wave not enough to disengage as Nesting is going uh, off in the back line right now. Exit has still to make it there. Raffle Spartan dodges it, but Exit's ultimate will pick up the double kill. She's getting the resets, uh, she but Sedge, oh my goodness, it's just a massacre right now. But all in all, it's going to be a two for five trade in favor of PC and another ace. 
And this is what we were expecting, was a very bloodthirsty fight, and Sejuani is doing what Sejuani does. Gets those big alts out, and then becomes an, un an unkillable front line. She's 1-0-13, and actually has an Abyssal Scepter. Interesting choice, but that synergizes very well with Katarina. Yeah, will be able to shred uh, the MR, uh, being that front line's uh, kind of a tank tanky force there, uh, and also gives a little bit more oomph to her spells. Now, now Rambo, we were talking about Sivir outscaling Lucian, but at 10-0-8, is that still the case? Has Raffle Spartan mm -hmm. gained enough of a lead that it really doesn't matter? I, I definitely think he has. Uh, he is currently 10-0. Uh, picking up the Vamp Scepter on top of the IE Phantom Dancer. He's putting a lot of damage. Uh, and there's really no one that can dive him, so he's basically getting this damage off for free. Yeah, well, Alex... Oh, we see Alex in the top lane. Yeah, uh, Wild Growth uh, will go on to Phoenix, but Onslaught of Shadows is going to pick up that kill. And a solo kill in their top lane, so they will not have Lulu uh, for a bit. Unfortunately, Death Timer's... Uh, sorry, Death Timer's still not too, too long. The that's, why you, that's why you bring uh, the Ignite Hecarim top, because you can get him in a split push, and most, as I said, most top laners can't deal uh, in a 1v1 situation when the other top laner has an offensive uh, summoner spell like Ignite. Yeah, well, Slippy will just wave clear that top lane trying to uh, stall Alex for as long as possible. It looks like there is going to Panpu going to get caught out by Raffle Spartan. Look at that just damage coming out from him. The chase is real. Um, as he goes on to there, does have the help of Pepper Moose. Q will land. Panpu uh, is just going to go down. Actually goes over to the support. Pepper wanting, wanting a little bit of the pie. Uh, as his ADC is... 10, 0, and 9. And just just to put that into perspective, that's 19 k kills that he's participated in out of 22. Oh, but don't worry, Braum has one up to Zadie Carey. He's actually a part of 20 kills. Slowly and like very quietly making himself one of the, the big playmakers of this team this game. No, that is absolutely right. And now you see all the Spectral Cals coming out from PC against this quad AP team. Uh, it might be the chance for Sivir, though, uh, for Professor Chewie to do some work if they underestimate his damage as he is sitting on another BF sword as well. Interesting thing though is you can you see the ten zero nine Lucian is actually behind in items compared to Sivir right now, and that is that is to say the probably the thirty CS advantage um, that he has almost forty. Uh, but I don't know if that really go. No, we we say that, but uh, Raffle Spartan is actually sitting on fifteen hundred. He just has yet to buy. But well, Sivir herself is sitting on almost enough to complete her Bloodthirster as well, sitting around 1100 gold. So it's it's a, it's a that CS is actually a big part of uh, keeping her in this. Yeah, and sh by all means, uh, Professor Chu is not doing bad. He is sick doing the best for his team right now at 6-4-1. and one. Sloppy actually gets caught up by Alex. Uh, will pop that Onslaught of Shadows just doing so much damage, but Alex doesn't have anything to follow up that spirit rush TP actually coming out from Phoenix Genesis on a minion a uh, will cancel though yeah just wanting to see how far Alex decided to chase that one and the answer was not very far an interesting pickup that I have uh, haven't seen in a while and Rambo might be able to help is the fairer brutes on Lucian uh, I have not seen that in a while I haven't even picked those up in a while. 
It, it also looks like he's going for the Last Whisper, opting out the Bloodthirster. Um, I don't think I, I agree with that, actually. He doesn't want to really be hitting the Nunu, and that's really the only one with armor. Yeah, with that said, though, Fjord Boots do work, considering the fact that there is that slow from Pan Poo, he wants to be able to get that boost of movement speed uh, after the auto attacks, um, and that partnered up with his W uh, will give him a big bo movement speed boost, uh, you know, uh, in this team fight, just granting him even more mobility, and I think he, it's his answer to the utility that Professor Chewie brings with um, that Sivir ultimate. But Alex is here now, home guarding in, uh, will actually just get polymorphed out. Phoenix Genesis is so on point with that. Uh, Panpu going into the pit right now as testing is going over here. Panpu wanting to steal that away, and he does! Finally, the first dragon going over to Hyper Ninja Beam, but at what cost? Panpu getting uh, just uh, rocked by Raffle Spartan. Meanwhile, in the back line, Alex does pick a pit kill onto Sloppy. Nesting is going to uh, get a kill on Panpu as well, but uh, will uh, si uh, Chewie uh, getting Xseed? I don't know what happened there, did not see it as it was off screen, but Professor Chewie, thanks to Tide Blessers calling, will pick up another kill, but falls to that huge 11 0 11 uh, Lucian. Ruffle Spartan rocking his team on his back right now. Not to say that his team isn't helping out in their own way, but uh, in that back line, the dive onto Professor Chewie kind of going in disarray as. Professor Chewie gets a gets a triple. Sorry, mind you, a double. Double. Yeah. yeah. Uh, killing both X Seed and Alex. And even though uh, we see the twenty six kills and the three dragons, and they just picked up the Baron. Uh, I'd actually have to give Hyper Ninja Beam a lot of credit. They are still up in the tower game. And if this game keeps going on a little bit later, a little bit longer, you can see six items on both sides. It kind of resets the whole game uh, and kind of stops the snowball. So if they can hold out a bit longer, they still have a lot of their towers up. Uh, it could, uh, They could still call their way back in this game. And it's only a 5,000 gold deficit, which isn't the biggest... Uh, that I've seen at 30 minutes. No, I absolutely agree with you. Hyper Ninja Beam doing great to stall out this game, making sure that their lanes are pushed out, thankfully, to the wave clear of, you know, uh, Sl Ari, uh, Severe, and Lulu. So, and I almost feel like PC are going for more of these kills rather than objective wise yes they pick up the dragons yes they pick up the baron but they have yet to really touch hyper ninja beams towers not putting enough emphasis on there we'll see if they can use this baron to the best of its ability uh, by uh, pushing it out now i almost feel like they should put x seed though in another lane doing a one three one split push I believe that Raffle Spartan is strong enough uh, to have just the help of two members. But Alex is in the top lane trying to duel a Phoenix uh, as he pressures this top turret. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the Baron buff. But just like this... Okay. Sorry, just like this, a PC is doing this 1-4 split with all four members that have Baron buff in the mid lane. I I honestly don't agree with this. And this is what I was talking about a bit earlier and then the champion select is they pick their team comp with very little wave clear. And that's a tough thing to siege with. So on the other side, you have an Ari and a Saber who just clears out waves. Lulu can go top lane and just glitter lance the wave. And we're just seeing, we're seeing almost the downside of a, such an aggressive comp. Yeah, and they have yet to put anybody down in the bot lane. It is naturally pushing in their favor, but they could easily send somebody out there. Sloppy actually 
uh, not dodging that Sedge ulti. Landing a charm onto Pepper Moose, but kind of the wrong target as they are just poking out to and four. And this is Baron buff being wasted. Meanwhile, Alex just gets chunked out of Phoenix in the top lane. Will go on to Phoenix, and Phoenix is oom right now, but a nice Zhonya's there to stop the aggression from Alex. And just like that, Baron is gone and over with. And PC get nothing for their efforts and actually engage from to Sloppy right now as they go in. Uh, Pepper Moose uh, dropping quite low, but so does pa uh, Sloppy. Nesting will uh, get chunked out as well. Ultimate from Big Blast Brendan not really connecting with anyone. But when all is said and done, Baron not really doing much for PC. And something interesting is Lulu is now able to duel the Hecarim. We kind of saw that there. Uh, and all, and uh, all honestly, Lulu ended up winning that duel since the Hecarim had to leave and couldn't even take a tower with a Baron buff. So this this could be a scary spot in the game if uh, if the Hecarim can't split anymore uh, against the Lulu. Yeah, and. Now actually going back and get getting himself a pickaxe, I feel like this is a wrong choice. I feel like Alex just needs to go more tank. Exit going on to Sloppy and ah, picks him off. Will fall dangerously low as Ignite is ticking, but should survive and does. And just like that, a little bit of positional error from Sloppy. Will grant that Katarina kill. And we're seeing why Exceed was so confident picking Cat. Had a rough lane phase, already did a great job getting ahead. Uh, but now, this, uh, the Cat Renus is doing too much damage for Ari to deal with 1v1. Yeah, that is true. And with sitting on that third Nidusi Large Rod, I can almost assume that uh, Exceed is going to go for Aludens Echo himself. Uh, but it's going to be a fourth dragon for uh, PC right now, mind you, excuse me, um, as a Hyper Ninja Beam are not going to be able to contest that. Thankfully, they do get the timer for it um, and will not have to, yeah, you know, take that a little bit of extra effort to time it themselves. Now, this is the danger that Hyper Ninja Beam is running into. And, and walk you know walk with me on this one yes they are later late game I think we've established this but that kind of doomsday timer of five dragons might be too much for even Hyper Ninja Beam to deal with. Now they do dive onto Phoenix. He is forced to flash out as they pick up that T2 top tower. Uh, Exceed will find Pampu in the middle of the jungle as he drops really low. Is going to force flash out of there. But the flash from Exceed not go actually is going to be enough. The bubble from Big Blast Brendan not able to get there in time. As Exceed does land the Q for the kill. But that, th that being said... If PC keep on getting these picks, Hyper Ninja Beam is kind of shooting themselves in the foot because they honestly j just don't need to die. If they hold out, you know, without feeding any more kills to PC, they do have a chance despite the five dragons. But uh, these miss positions coming out from a Hyper Ninja Beam, getting caught in their own jungle, again, despite the double side stone, I'm not seeing the vision from Hyper Ninja Beam. I know, I know Rambo is a bit uh, more accustomed to these 40 plus minute games. What are, what are the main goals once it gets to like the 40 or 50 second death timers? Uh, honestly, choose your fights very wisely. You uh, basically can't die. If you die, you give up a Baron or even an Inhib. Uh, and you can't do that. In these longer games, you'll just lose. <laughs> uh, farm and items don't really make that much of a difference later in the game because they're basically your six items for both teams. Uh, Baron fight coming now. 
Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be PC to initiate uh, the Baron this time. So Hyper Ninja Beam doing a lot of uh, trying to stop them. Exit falling dangerously low as Phoenix Genesis is trying to poke the backline. Pampu is going to uh, fall though to Pepper Moose as they are trying to kite back from this. A nice a two for one trade right now for Hyper Ninja Beam as they go on to it. Uh, Lucian getting zoned out quite a bit. They will catch Pepper Moose though with a charm and that's going to fall. And a two for three trade for Hyper Ninja Beam coming out ahead in that team fight. I have to say, MVP of that fight is Lulu. Uh, she does have the best scoring, 2 in 7, but she solo kills Katarina in a 1v1. That is a huge, that, that basically has shut down the entire AoE magic damage coming out from uh, President's Choice. So I have to give Lulu uh, big props on uh, that duel she just had there. And look at this, uh, Hyper Ninja Beam. The one thing that they've done great is make sure that all their lanes are shoved up. And there was a huge wave bot lane taking the uh, attention of Nesting, which in turn got Hyper Ninja Beam an inhibitor. Now, I don't think they should do the Baron, but this is their chance to get all of the wards out. Well, uh, it is going to be a TP from Alex onto Big Blast Brendan, trying to save that pink ward. Uh, Professor Chewy is there, uh, Alex is just going to back out, but he just goes back in, but Sloppy's here, misplay from Hecarim, and just like that, it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade though, as Xe is trying to clean up house, but Phoenix will pick up the kill onto that, the re-engage coming out from the rest of the team, oh. Ruffle Spartan is here popping, uh, pa Panpoon is actually going to uh, fall to that, so both, it is still a two-for-two -two trade, but Hyper Ninja Panpoon. Beam losing their jungler Panfu should not have ran back in they got a two for one and then I don't know what Nunu thought he thought he was God or something and he just ran back in thinking he could 1v4 or 1v3 at that point a very big mistake on his part and it's going to be a dr uh, ba another Baron on the favor of PC right now and you know comparatively Junglers, uh, nesting, coming out, just out jungling Panpoon, uh, in this game. The KDAs really tell it all, as well as the dragons. Just com uh, nesting having uh, complete domination on those, uh, jungle objectives. Speaking of dragon, 30 seconds, and that's the dragon 5. Good thing on the side of Hyper Ninja Beam, they picked up the Scuttle Crab at the perfect time so they have the vision let's see if they can they well they have to they have to stop it uh, baron and if five dragons is almost gg for certain and there it is they are going to try to set up a cheesy pick in the tri bush they are going to go on to nesting uh, gets caught out x seed gets charmed uh and will not go down as forced to flash and zonya's away a sloppy finally picks up the kill on x seed that's the thing uh that's the pick that they needed as they go on to here meanwhile uh pepper is in the back line as well as alex trying to do as much damage as they can phoenix forces zonya's though as alex will charge uh Onslaught of Shadows dropping Sloopy quite low. Sloopy needs to get out of there as he has no health. But the re engage coming out from Ruffle Spartan will pick up a double kill as well. Alex picks up Sloopy in the back end. And this fight is just going terrible for Hyper Ninja Beam. The pick that looked so good ends up in them getting aced as surely Panpu will fall. And Baron, fifth dragon, will go over to PC right now. And with death timers so long, this is most definitely going to be an inhib. Now, I would say this is game, but they still have to get through two towers as this T2 is still up. But they have the time, they have the damage. Let's see if we, they can finish it right now. Phoenix and Chewie are both up in 15 seconds. They do not have a minion wave and a PC is actually quite low. They are just going to rotate for that top turret. A smart choice, knowing that they won't be able to finish the Nexus, but they do pick themselves up a double inhibs. Now, they still have a Baron 
for just a little bit longer might be enough to clear out uh, the jungle and the buffs for Hyper Ninja Beam, but they are still they are going to be sitting on that fifth dragon buff for just a bit longer. Now these fights uh, for Hyper Ninja Beam end up looking quite good. But I feel like the re-engage from PC is just better. Well, as I was saying, they can't fight in those corridors. Even when they get picks, you can see the Sej in the Hecarim alts just annihilating them when they're all grouped up in a corridor. So they need to kind of, as I said, find those open fights where they can move around and use their mobility in their advantage. Oh, but Chewie gets caught out uh, just a bit on Pepper Moo. Ultimate from Sejuani is going to come, but uh, uh, the TP from Phoenix is going to stop the aggression, uh, saving that ADC. But TP is now down for a Phoenix. And now on the side of uh, President's Choice, they still have to be very careful. Uh, they feel like they're ahead. You look at their gold lead, they're very ahead. But you look at items, everyone's around six items. And so the next fight could actually mean game either way, with that open inhib bid still available uh, yeah. on both sides. Yeah, now unfortunately Hyper Ninja Beam has shown that they have a little bit of a weaker team fight uh, focus as a PC coming away with these 5v5s ahead consistently this game. Really Hyper Ninja oh. Beam. Uh, we'll have to give up the C2 tower. Um, and PC trying to see if they can grab this last inhibitor. They really are just trying to buy time for super minions to start wailing away at those Nexus turrets. They will have to send at least uh, two people to deal with the lanes. As the siege continues for PC. So when you look at the, the defensive items right now in both AD carries, they went with the Banshee's Veil. Oh well, Tidal Wave coming out from Nami, a Glacial Official will land onto Panpu. Uh, not really the person that they want, but he is going to explode Wild Growth, trying to stall out for as long as possible, but ne uh, Nesting is going to get that. Onslaught of Shadows will zone out Phoenix Genesis from the rest of the team, and he's going to go down uh, to Alex as they chase on. Exceed does get caught out of the charm, will fall too sloppy, but it's not going to be enough as now it's going to be a three on four. Alex is a low but does have a GA. Raffle Spartan trying to duel with Sloopy. Uh, Sloopy Zonius as it is, but they're wailing away at the turret. Sloopy gets a shutdown on Raffle Spartan and Hyper Ninja Beam hold for now, but the question is at what cost? trying desperately to clear out the super minions. Unfortunately, they do have Chewy here. The turret getting attacked oh, by Hecarim, these super minions. Hecarim TP. Hecarim TP trying to expecate this. Will he get? It actually gets caught out of the bubble, oh, but that's oh. going to be game. And in a very a bloodthirsty fight and a, quite a bloodbath it was.